welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a first impressions again, but this time it's on the Pound World makeup range called Miss Beauty. So all the items in the range are a pound and I wanted to see how they stack up because I think I remember the Poundland versions getting rave reviews all over the internet. So I wanted to see how these stack up to normal drugstore, high street kind of makeup and see if it is worth actually wasting a pound on. I know it's only a pound but pounds get you a lot nowadays. I have all sorts from the range to give a go. So I have um, foundations, powders, mascaras, eyeshadows. I don't have a lip colour though so that's a bit of a sad, sad one. But we'll give it a go anyway. I'm going to put on my sexy headband and then we'll jump straight in to see how the products are. Okay, so I've got the gorgeous looking headband on. Hair is looking on point. Um, let's jump straight in. So I don't have a primer. The I don't even know if they do a primer. don't think so. I will double check and let you know. But the first item I have is the foundation. So it's the Miss Beauty Flawless Matte Foundation Easy Wear Lightweight Foundation with Vitamin E. I have the shade 3, which I'm assuming is going to be a little bit dark because when I did get this, it kind of matched because I still had a bit of tan left from my holiday. As you can tell, my face does not match my arms. My face is generally always pale. So um, I'm going to stop waffling anyway and we will give it a go. I might keep looking down below, um, it's because my mirror is here. So it's um, just a squeezy tube. So I have, whoa, quite a lot came out with a tiny little squeeze there. So I'm going to do half my face with a buffing brush and half my face with a beauty blender just to see if there's any difference in the application at all. So let's go in first with my Blank Canvas Cosmetics F20 Buffing Brush. Get my little mirror as well. So not organised for this. Right, that's actually the shade's quite light for shade 3. Um, I don't know how many shades it actually comes in. So we'll do this side as my buffing brush side. Um, don't really have much of a scent. Lord knows how much I'll need, but um, let's go in. It's definitely pale. Uh, it's quite thin, although it looks a bit like a cream. It's very thin. It's giving decent coverage. It's starting to smell a little bit now, um, a little bit chemically. I'm surprised that didn't come out to start with. Um, I don't have a concealer as well so I'm going over my eyes to try and cover them up slightly. I do have a lot of blemishes and a lot of pitting and scarring on my skin. Um, it's going on okay. I've put a little bit more on because the coverage on my cheek area always needs more. Feels a little bit tacky still. It's a little bit meh for a quid. You can't really go wrong if you're in a if you're a student on a budget. It'd look really good if I had some concealer to cover up these two little friends that I have here. I'll give it a try with my trusty beauty blender. It's not dirty. It's just the black one seems to stain a lot. It's quite watery. I'd help if I swapped hands. It's um it's not caking or anything, it just seems to be because obviously there's water on the beauty blender and the foundation itself is quite watery. It 
just seems to be shearing out quite a lot. I don't know if you can obviously see because my viewfinder is tiny. Yeah, the Beauty Blender obviously swallows up a lot of product despite the blender itself being wet. Well, I do love them. The finish it gives with the blender is nicer but a lot sheerer. It's buildable without caking. I definitely think if you don't need a lot of coverage on your skin, um, if your skin's in pretty good condition and not many blemishes, then this would be a great foundation for you if you're on a tight budget on a squeeze and just need something there and then and don't want to spend a tenner on a drugstore foundation. Um, yeah, it's it's okay. I'll go back to building up some coverage with my brush. Next up we have the Miss Beauty um, powder. It doesn't actually have a name. This is the shade number 14, which is Autumn Beige, which again, I think it might be a little bit too dark for me, maybe. I tend to just wear translucent powders. Um, oh, wow, it's very powdery. It smells, um, I hate to say this because it's offensive to our grandmas out there, but it smells like grandma. You know, that very old, perfumey, powdery smell that you used to, yeah, maybe it was just my grandma, but it, it definitely smells strange, shall we say. So, just tap this in. Do you know what, that actually gives a little bit of coverage as well. It is very, very powdery though. It's not caked, which is always a good sign. I'm quite impressed with this. Apart from the smell, this is definitely worth a quid. The smell though. If it fades on the skin, that's great. If it doesn't, then um, you'll be smelling like an old lady for the day. Definitely quite impressed with this. We'll see how it wears. Um, I'm not doing a full face of going out in makeup because I'm not actually going out anywhere. Um, but I will sit in the makeup in the house for a few hours and see how it wears and update the down box down below. I'm definitely impressed with this for a pound. I would purchase it. Um, I'm not actually going anywhere for the rest of the day, but I will sit in the house with it on and won't wash it off immediately, just to see how it wears. It's, I'm not sure, but something's going orange. Hmm. Not sure if it's the foundation oxidizing or the fact that the powder might just be a little bit too dark for me and I don't know if it's showing up on camera. Probably not. <clears throat> but we'll start with the bronzer. I'm not actually a big drugstore bronzer wearer. The only one I tend to wear is the Bourjois um, chocolate one where it has the two, it has the highlighter and the bronzer. Um, and Benefit Hula but that's not high street. So this is the bronzer. It looks quite orangey. Um, we'll give it a go. It's got an ever so slight shimmer to it and I hate bronzers with a shimmering. I'm all about the matte bronze. It's really powdery. It's hella shimmery. Whoa, it's... I very much doubt this will show up well on camera but it's quite orangey. 
However, some people like that kind of look. Who am I to judge? impressed. It's actually not showing up as orange on the skin as I thought it would. Um, i just give it a little bit of a blend. Actually not that bad. I very much doubt it's showing up on the camera but I quite like it. Next up in my little box of goodies we have eyeshadows. Um, they're quite random shades, I've got like a purple one and a brown one, but I do have two blushes that are probably mixable in with the bronzer to try and make transition colours and stuff like that, so I'll give it a go. As I said, this makeup isn't meant to be pretty, it's just meant to see what it actually works like, um, and luckily I'm not off anywhere for the rest of the day, so they're the colours, um, I will insert some close-ups of them so you can get a proper look, but let's get going. I'm just going to start off by dusting over the lighter shade all over my lid and then mixing the two together as a transi transitional shade. I hope if I could speak. It would also help if I could find my brush. Found it. The colour hasn't really shown up much. Um, I don't know if that's because it's too light or, or what. Putting that in the crease to add a little bit of depth and also to make it easier to blend out the shades later. I have no idea what I'm going to do on my eyes because one shade that I have is a very dark purple, the other one I have is a very dark brown. So maybe because I've used the bronzer in the crease I can use the brown just to deepen up the socket a little. We shall see. So now I'm going to use this shade which is a very deep brown. It is called Mystery. We'll see how that goes. It's got quite it's got a little bit of shimmer to it, which because I have hooded eyes, I should never really put shimmer in my crease. Because it makes it look worse. Um colour payoff's alright. A little bit patchy. Um, don't know if you can really see that on camera. Try zooming. Yeah, it's quite patchy and it's a lot lighter than what it is in the pan. Not really the biggest fan of that. The colour payoff isn't brilliant, it's quite patchy. Personally, if you were looking for a budget eyeshadow, I'd stick with um, <clears throat> Makeup Revolution or Freedom Makeup. Similar kind of price if you work it out per pan per palette. I think they work out about 60p an eyeshadow. Not the biggest fan. We'll try with the blusher on the lid to see what kind of effect I can get with that. This is a very neutral um, pale shade so it's um, be great for setting eyeshadow because it is kind of skin colour. So I don't know how they can call it a blusher because even on dark skin you don't blush light, you blush dark. Actually not that bad, quite like it. Mm, it's alright, does the job. Um, not something I would actually purchase, so let's move on. Next up is the Miss Beauty Waterproof Mascara. This is going to be a difficult one for me to test because at the minute I have LVL lashes. 
um, which is where they bend your lashes from the root and kind of curl them up. Um, so some have curled and some are falling out and some are um, going back to normal so it's going to be a hard one for me to test but we'll see how it goes. Wow, so there's nothing on there. Um, well, I've never seen this before so I've pulled it out and there's like nothing on the brush at all. Like, is it the American kind of way where it's um, you have to pull like a nib off at the top? So maybe this. There is literally nothing in there. I'm looking in the tube, and seriously, you obviously won't be able to see it. So I don't know why I'm doing this, but seriously, nothing in there at all. It is. Bone dry, empty. All that I can see in there is blue, which, because the casing is blue, obviously means there is no black mascara in there. <laughs> well, that's a good first impression. So, um, can't test the mascara, but if they come empty, then yeah, don't bother. On to the next one. So next is blusher. I'm still a bit upset. Um, I have this blusher, this one, and it's in the shade Bon Bon or Bam Bam. The writing's a little bit strange, you can't really tell. Um, it's a very pale baby kind of pink. And I don't know if you can tell, um, but when I'm patting like that, it's just dust going everywhere. It's very powdery but it doesn't smell so let's give it a go it's pigmented I'll give it that much not my usual shade um, I usually go for very like toffee colours or very um, mauve pinks but this is nice um, it does have a very very slight shimmer to it it's not showing up much on the skin, but it is in the pan. It's definitely built as well. Can you see? Can you see? Um, it's not really my colour tad. Ooh. <laughs> They've been putting it on facing this way, like with the light coming this way, and it's not looked so good. And then when I've gone like that, there's absolutely loads on there. I like this. It kind of suits my colouring as well. Um, so yeah, good job on a quick blusher. So there we go, there's my full face, apparently, of makeup by Miss Beauty. Um, I'm very gutted about the mascara. It's gonna take me a while to get over that. Um, if it wasn't a first impressions, I could just technically shove the wand into a different dispenser and try the wand. That's not really a true reflection because it's a different formula. So, oh well. You win some, you lose some. But I'm definitely impressed with the range overall. All items are a pound, so you can't really go wrong for a pound. The standouts for me were the powder and the foundation. Whilst, after I'd finished putting my bronzer on, my camera actually died, so I had to go and sit in the living room and wait for the other battery to charge because I don't have a spare. And whilst I was waiting, I was expecting it to start separating and caking oxidising and going extremely yellow, uh, orange sorry, but it doesn't seem to have a bronzer, it's just a bit meh personally, I'd get the Rimmel one, um, what else did we try, blusher, quite liking the blusher, um, we'll see how it wears, I'll put some info in the down, below, down box below to how it wore and things like that, what else did we try, eyeshadows, not a fan of, I liked the blusher in Honey as an eyeshadow, wasn't actually impressed with the brown eyeshadow patchy, it's, the pigment is not the best, wouldn't recommend, personally I'd go just go get a Makeup Revolution palette, what else did we have, mascara can't really comment on, and that was it, yes, that was it, for a quid you can't really go wrong with most of the stuff, the blushes, the powder and the foundation are definitely the standouts, I'd skip the um, bronzer and the Thing that goes on your eyes, eyeshadow. 
but other than that quite a good range can't really go wrong for a quid definitely check them out so it's available they don't actually sell it online but it is available in stores um, at pound world I have to always remember that because I want to say pound land and it's not it's pound world the rival doesn't really have mentioned it <laughs> But thank you for watching this video, I hope you've liked it and if you'd like any more first impressions or one brand tutorials or anything like that, please do let me know in the comment down below and I will um, try my best to get that done for you. But thank you so much for watching um, and I hope you have a fabulous day.